Welcome to the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library right here in Simi Valley. And this is where Ronald Reagan, the 40th president, was standing while they opened up the Presidential Library here in Simi Valley. Well, this video is not about politics. This is about having a good time revisiting history. I got all those pictures I want to match up. They were all taken right here at the library. And I just want to step in their footsteps and having a good time. Today is the perfect day. It rained earlier today. It's not hot. It's just a beautiful day. Let's go. Where else do you have a chance to see the original death car of Bonnie and Clyde? This is normally in Nevada at the Whiskey Pete's, but for some reason they brought it down here to the Ronald Reagan Library to have an exhibition. And before I'm gonna show you all this, I'm gonna match up some pictures for you guys where all the president walked around right here. I love it. The 40th president, Ronald Reagan from 1981 to 1989. Hello, Mr. President. I'm German in Venice, nice to meet you. I'm not sure how tall he was, but I don't think he was that tall. It's a well done statue right here at the Rose Garden. Look at the detail. Of course, he was a movie star, so he had to have a statue on a horse. You can see pictures on the internet when they had the big fire in the valley. The fire came all the way up here. All this burned down. And this is so close to the library. It won't get any better than this. This is the original piece from the German wall. And this is where Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan were standing. And when Ronald Reagan said to Gorbachev, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. And as you can see, the west side of the wall is all graffitied up nice with butterflies and flowers. And then if you go to the east side, of course, you couldn't even get close to the wall. That's why it's all white. This wall was in Germany divided east and west and Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan were standing right here unbelievable I know you didn't know but now you know and it was right in front of the entrance where you see the five presidents standing from the left to the right you see George N. W. Bush we see Ronald Reagan we, we see Carter Gerald Ford and Richard Nixon. They're all standing here. I mean, history. I just love standing here looking at it, thinking they were here. And this one is taken a little bit further to the left. Look how big the trees grow in the background. All five presidents. And since I showed you the presidents, I have to show you the first ladies too. Barbara Bush, then we got Nancy Reagan. I don't really know all the other names, sorry about that. And here you can see President Bush walking with Nancy Reagan and his wife, visiting Ronald Reagan's final resting place. It's right here to your left where the presidential seal is. Right behind this is the final resting place. I am approaching and I'm paying my respect to the final resting place where Ronald Wilson Reagan and Nancy Davis Reagan is laid to rest. It looks so much bigger if you see it in pictures. I know in my heart that man is good, that what is right will always eventually triumph. And there is a purpose and worth to each and every life. And I found this picture on the internet where Nancy Reagan is visiting her husband and just sitting there and probably remembering the good time she had with him. Another picture with President Bush and Nancy Reagan visiting Ronald Reagan's graveside before they put the rail up. And this is where a soldier gave Nancy Reagan the American flag that covered the casket. Ronald Reagan and Arnold Schwarzenegger used to be really good friends. And this is Arnold on the right hand side standing with Maria Shriver, paying their final respect. You better stay tuned because you're gonna see Air Force One and the presidential helicopter and more and more things. Honoring the life and legacy of Nancy Davis Reagan. 
Look how pretty she is. They missed me. Welcome back. There's another picture of her. Howdy doody, Ronald. One, please. So it was $29.95 to get in. But guess what? You get an in for free. Don't tell anybody. Try to stay close to me. Don't touch anything. Because I don't really want them to know that 20,000 people are going to get in for free. Let's go. This is what you see when you walk in. The presidential seal. And Ronald. Can I introduce you? Ronald and Nancy Reagan. He's a hologram. This philosophy can be summed up in four sentences. We see America's best days ahead. What are the odds? If one of those people would not live, Reagan would have never been president. This is the original Bible that was owned by Ronald Reagan's mom, Nellie. This is also the Bible where Ronald Reagan put his left hand on and swear during the inauguration. Can you believe it? He was flipping through all those pages. That's history right there. And we're just looking at it. But Ronald was actually reading it. His mom was reading it. But I can't really read it because it's too small. Those are all the swimming medals Ronald Reagan won. And now they ended up here. I wonder where my 100,000 subscriber sign ended up one day for having 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. This is the costume he was wearing in Santa Fe trial and all those other pictures are all the ones from his movies. That's the sweater he wore. But believe it or not, he was doing a commercial for cigarettes back then. Have a merry smoking Christmas. California. Thanks. Those are motivational quotes he wrote down. Look how small he was writing. And like I said, it's unbelievable that his hands touched it and he was writing all this down and now we're here looking at it. This is the presidential seal. We see Carter. This is Ronald Reagan's son, Nancy Reagan, Bush. And this is exactly what she was wearing at the inauguration. And you can look at it close up right here. This is the head covering. And this is the red coat she was wearing. And this is what Ronald was wearing. A silver tie. It was right here. It was right here when John Hinckley fired six shots at President Ronald Reagan. This is the suit he was wearing today. And you can see his pants and his suit that day. They had to cut it all open, but you can see the bullet hole where it entered. And in the x-ray, you can see how close he came to death. This is the bullet, and this is really close to his heart. This is the revolver. Six shots were fired. This is the sweater he was wearing after he left the hospital with the bulletproof vest underneath. And people send him get well canes. Look at the one with all the jelly beans. We all know that President Ronald Reagan loved jelly beans. This is an original copy of the Oval Office in Washington. How cool would it be to be in the original White House? Joe, call me. All those presidents showed up for the opening of the library. They were all posing right here at the fake Oval Office. It sure looked like he had some fun in the White House. Those were all items that were on his desk displayed at the White House. And I just still can't believe how small he writes. Look at this, you can barely read it. This is the plate you would dine on in the White House with golden surrounding. A portrait of Ronald Reagan made out of butterfly wings. The green wool coat she was wearing for Christmas, the dress, the gown. And we just walked by, like I said, but this is history here.
Oh, look at how huge the Air Force One is. The presidential airplane. Looking out into Simi Valley. There we got the United States of America helicopter. Presidential Motor Arcade with the black SUVs. But this is amazing. From what I heard is they first put the airplane here and they built everything around it. Look what it says. Please do not touch. And when they have a sign like this, you always want to touch it, but I ain't going to touch it. It's right there. I could touch it, but I ain't going to touch it. This is the wing. In case of emergency, just break the glass and it flies right out. This is right when they opened the museum. President Bush was here and Nancy Reagan. There you can see President Obama. This is where Nancy was cutting the rope at the red carpet. Right here. And then we got President Donald Trump. And now we're gonna go into Air Force One. Whoa. This is the Air Force One from the cockpit. Of course, I'm boarding a real airport, but it feels like I'm going somewhere right now. Thank you. Did you wanna hear anything about anything up here? No, ma'am, I'm good, thank you okay. so much. Yes, ma'am, of course. VHS, an old TV. And of course, jelly beans, jelly beans everywhere. So this is the original plane in Germany after he did a speech with Gorbachev and he told uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, tear down the wall. This is when we was leaving. And I got a picture to match up right here with Nancy Reagan and President Bush being inside this plane here. So President Bush was standing here, Nancy Reagan right here, and the picture in the background. It's amazing. This is history here. This is exactly where Ronald Reagan was leaning on the chair. It's really surreal to be in this plane. It feels like he can come around the corner any minute. And look, they always got a chocolate cake here in case somebody's birthday is coming up. If not, you can just eat the cake. But I think it's been here for a long time already. This is the black SUV motorcade to protect the president. This would be the limousine the president would be in. That's the one. This is a really old police car. Almost looks like from Beverly Hills Cop. Of course, it's probably the 80s. This is the Marine One, United States of America. This is where Ronald Reagan and Nancy boarding the Marine Number One, the presidential helicopter. And here you see the same helicopter with President Nixon. standing right here pretty impressive and check this out this is a portrait made out of jelly beans of President Ronald Reagan and there we have it that's how a helicopter looks from the inside the Marine One presidential helicopter pretty small but it's like flying from Washington to like a close area it's not too bad 
Here you can see the German wall from Berlin, original replica. It's not original, it's just a replica. That's the uniform the East German soldiers were wearing. Jawohl. And this is a straight jacket from the Germans. Checkpoint Charlie. Well, those two people for sure changed history. Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev. Did they actually put his little thing on his head? Yeah. This is the suit Ronald Reagan was wearing right in front of the Brandenburger Tour in Germany. No, that was not a bird. You see Ronald Reagan with Margaret Thatcher and that's the jacket he was wearing that day. And his boots. This is his Malibu Pepperdine surfboard, which he got underneath his arm. This is the original flag that was covered over Ronald Reagan's casket, was given to her by a soldier, and now you can see the original flag right here. And here we're entering the FBI exhibit from Al Capone to Al Qaeda. This is one of the engines of Flight 175 flying into the South Tower at the World Trade Center in New York. This is an original metal piece from the Twin Towers in New York when 9-11 happened and the plane crashed into the Twin Towers. This is so heavy, just imagine all this crashing down. Steel beam and it's like bent like this, look. I mean, if you see something like this, that's give, that gives you a perspective how heavy everything must have been. This is the original death car from Bonnie and Clyde. Normally you have to go to Nevada, I told you that, at the Whiskey Pete's, but they moved everything over here to the library to exhibit it right here in Los Angeles. So it saves me a trip to Nevada. Holy moly, look at those gunshots. Hundreds of them. And there's like... I can put my little pinky finger, that's how big the holes are. And I guess they both died inside the car. I actually got a picture to match up, but I can't go on the other side. But that's where Bonnie was laying, leaning against Clyde. This is from the original video they took. And then I got another picture that shows all the guns they seized. The machine guns, they killed so many innocent people. But this is the original car. This is amazing. Absolutely incredible. On in Clyde, they have many replicas of the fake cars, but this is the original one stolen by Bonnie and Clyde. There's all the bullet holes in the back. It was an ambush. And that's what I really like when I go to the original places or like the original piece, just to stand here and imagine how everything happened and what they were thinking, what they were feeling or stuff like this. This is what I'm really interested in. It's really sad that it's not well lit in Nevada. They had like a plexiglass around it. You could walk around and see all the sights. All that blood in there. And this is the shirt Clyde was wearing that day when he got shot. See all the bullet holes. See in the back. He even got shot from the back. And now those are the sheriffs. They hunted them down. It looks like they didn't shoot through the front window, so they must have just come from the side and the back. With this type of gun, they shot all the bullet holes into the car. This is an original size cell at Alcatraz in San Francisco. And they had a pop mache head covering up and he escaped through a little hole 
to the air shaft. And let's check out how small the cell is. That's where they were living in. And he dig the hole in the back and escaped. Remember 2002, the Beltway sniper in Washington killed 10 people through a little hole in his trunk in the car. And they have the original car, which is right here. Just imagine him being inside that trunk and shooting 10 people randomly. And they didn't know who and where they were shooting from. This is the gun he was using. And they see some other handguns. He was hiding in this trunk. I can say it often enough. You know, we're looking at it right now, but at one time, it's just a time difference when he was climbing into that trunk here. So it's really weird seeing all this. Well, my friends, the video is not over yet. I wanted to give you like a little bonus because I've been in the valley already and the place I'm visiting right now, it's also in the valley. Let me show you something. Does that street look familiar to you? Streets where we go and we don't need no streets. And I turn this way, you see the electrical power. You know which house this is? This is Marty McFly from Back to the Future house. And look at this, I think Biff is working in the garage, cleaning the car. Well, maybe this is not Biff, but this is the house from Back to the Future. Look at all those cars are standing here. Power lines. And it was right here where he came with the skateboard and he walked right into the house. And this is also the place where Doc came and went back to the future. I mean, I always like to come here when I'm in the area. They're working in the garage. And look how nice this is. The lady who lives next door to the Marty McFly house, she came out and gave me a flyer where it shows pictures the day they filmed it. She was here, she lives across the street. So she took the pictures and I believe this was right here. And then there's Marty McFly. And we got his original California driver's license. And see, this is what life is all about. If people come out with this little flyer, she made my day, she made me happy. She's happy to give people the flyer. Everybody's happy. And I think this is the most important thing. We don't want to bother the people on their property, but you can come out here and take some pictures. Thank you very much. The lady, maybe you're watching. Thanks for the flyer. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Well, my friends, that was it live here from the library. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, push the notification bell, and subscribe to my channel. Four more years, German and Venice. See you guys later. Tschüssi.